like what I will say, as I said, just to go back, I'm not including Man United in a top four battle. No, that's fine. Like, listen, there's, there's listen, no we're, chance. We're, 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 45, that... we're 45 minutes into the show, and at, at, at five minute intervals, you keep mentioning that Man United are dead. Cool. Yeah, cool. Man United were the, the worst ever Premier League team that we've had last season in terms of points 58 points. Mm -hmm. There was a point, by the way, in the season, um, late-ish, where we were actually still in a race with you for top four, you know, when we get to the Emirates, and when you beat us, it was pretty much done. For me, it was done already, but mathematically and realistically, that was probably the game where it was done. Went to the Emirates and a few dodgy decisions. But anyway, by the by, May night, worst, worst season ever. We had three managers, by the way, Solskjaer, mm -hmm. Carrick, and Ranić. Um, Solskjaer was the only permanent one at any one point. Spurs had two managers last season. Uh, the first one, which they hired probably on deadline day, that was their signing because they went through about 15 managers in the summer, which obviously disrupted their preseason. Harry Kane, including your manager, really Harry Kane didn't play for the first half of the season because he didn't want to be there, and he only turned up in the second half of the season. Who you say is the only world class player? So they were kind of playing with 10 men, none who were world class for the first half of the season. Um, and then the manager they finally got was the one that they wanted initially. But anyway, we'll deal with that in a second. And Chelsea had an owner who couldn't even come to the country at one point, who had to sell the club and, and couldn't do anything for a period of time in the season. They also bought a bum of a strike of 100 million. So effectively, they were one man down in their team or squad whenever he was playing or whenever he was, whenever he was in the squad. Arsenal, at the same time, considering all of this, one game a week, a manager who's been there longer than all the other managers that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a squad who had all, a great harmony. They had sold all these players to free up the wages and all the young people could be released from the shackles of Obama Yang's late training session. Mm -hmm. You had top four in your hand. You lost three games in a row after the international break. Mm -hmm. Can you just name the opponents quickly, just so the people know? Crystal Palace, oh, Southampton and Brighton. Brighton, Palace okay. and who? Crystal Palace, Southampton and Brighton. And then you gave your manager a new contract on the back mm -hmm. of getting it to show him that you believe in his vision. Mm -hmm. And all of that, you still would have lost top four. Which As I said, you know what? Again, what's the you've got a manager less in the less time at, at, at a point in the season where they were far behind you in the league. With a worse yeah. squad as well. Don't yeah, yeah. yeah. But look, 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 look. Hold on. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna debunk all your stuff. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just gonna debunk all your stuff right I, I, now. No, I'm not but hold on, I'm gonna debunk. No, your no, points, you, your points, no, your points are silly. Because league, because league, no two seasons league, are league, ever league, the same. League, your points are silly league, because league, no, league, no two league, seasons league, are ever the same. Gunnelly, let me say what I'm saying. How do you extrapolate what we saw last season on all those other potential clubs who get top four? Extrapolate what Arsenal did last season to then say. Arsenal going to get third. You didn't mm -hmm. just say fourth, you know. You said third. Explain mm -hmm. your workings of how you extrapolate that because I'm okay. not seeing it. And I do. As I said, as I've said to you, as I've said to you, yeah, as I said to you, for me, I said by default, Arsenal it's getting not top default. Four. You've twisted it and made it the point. It's not default. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Are you speaking? Okay, are, you speaking are you talking or am I talking? Are you talking or am I talking? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you're talking, I'm going to be. Okay, I'll wait right. for you. I'll finish. Okay, so as I said to you, by default, I believe that Arsenal are going to get top four. I'm not making it a manager thing. You are. You're making it into a manager thing. I'm not making it into a manager thing. I just think Man United, as I said to you, you look, you finish 11 points behind us. I don't think you've done anything at this current moment to catch that gap of us. I don't think you've done enough to catch Tottenham, who you finished 13 points above you. And then obviously Chelsea finished even more points above you. As I said to you, Chelsea, they're going for a re big, big rebuild. We There's allegations of fraud allegations against Tuchel that he can't manage to attack his, his midfield, Kante, the defence. So you can't just say, oh, because they're buying all of these players that they're then going to just be these world beaters because it looks a bit like Harlem Globetrotters. And again, you can also look to the point that Chelsea, their attack does look blunt. Sterling, people rate him. Some people don't. I don't know how he's going to do in that team. Timo Werner, don't rate him. Havertz, I don't rate him. So people are just going off the names, I think. As I said, with Arsenal, hopefully we make that we make that leap. And again, I don't think it's far-fetched to say that Arsenal are going to finish top four. People it's might say, oh, I'm... Is a no, but, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me land. Hold on, let me land. Hold on, let me land. Hold on, let me land. 
agree. I don't think it's I don't think it's been a far fetched for people to think that Arsenal are going to finish top four. And for me, as I said, part of it is I'm putting a lot of pressure on Arteta because, as you said, first season he finished eighth, second fin well first half the season he finished eighth, second his first full season he finished eighth, third season he finished fifth. Yeah, so well, well just second like and two and a half he finished fifth. Yeah, so some people say he's overachieved. I think it's hard to say that because. He did overachieve, but he bottled it. Like, there's no two ways about it. But at the same point, I'm now looking at it. I, he has to make progression. And the only steady progression he's going to make is to move into the top four. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, hold on. So now the only steady progression that he needs to make is to go to that top four. When he now, now what I'm saying to you is, and something that Matisse says, a big up to Matisse, I don't, uh, he doesn't know me, I don't know him, but, yeah, yeah, but what he says is really, really good. To, to, to actually achieve, I believe you have to overachieve. So for me, I'm looking at fourth, fourth place. Yeah, it's good. But to get to that third place, we didn't finish that many points behind Chelsea with no striker. And yes, it was on Arteta to do that. And he believed that at one good point throughout the season that he could get top four without it, without without a Batman, without the likes of Lacazette, without playing in Ketia, et cetera, et cetera. But it didn't work. And for me now, I'm looking at it. We now have Jesus. And I feel like he's going to be, he's going to be such a transformative striker. I'm not calling him world-class. He is not world-class. The same way how I don't think Son's world-class. Son is better than Jesus, of clearly. But I do think... That he's sorry, make... don't compare. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me land. Let me land. <laughs> I think he's going to make a massive difference for our attack, and it's not only it's not only the goals. I think the movement, the link up play, and as I said, with the the leap that I'm I'm, I'm assuming that Saka is going to take, with the leap that I'm thinking that someone like Partey is going to take, with the leap that we've got now, got a, we we've raised the base level of quality. So we've got the likes of Fabio Vieira, we've got Saliba back, who it seems like it, and everyone keeps saying it. Even though it's not, it seems like a new signing. We've now got Zinchenko, who is, I think, going to be a bona fide for Arsenal. I think he's going to be for Arsenal. For Arsenal, for Arsenal, yeah, we're going to for Arsenal, I think he's going to be nominated, actually. And this might be a little punt. I think he's going to be nominated for one of the players of the season. I think he's going to be an underrated player for us this season. And every top team has a player like that, whether it's a James Milner, like a John O'Shea, a Darren Fletcher, a Park, an Essien. Oh, why are Arsenal's predictions always based off the potential on their players? I expect no, 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 it's not potential. Not potential. I expect Partey. You see what I'm doing? How about, I'm not, about, I'm look, not Tottenham wait, wait, no, Gilly, Tottenham, Chelsea and the other teams you mentioned, we have players that we know what to expect because they're world-class and because no, they're top-class players. Rubbish, they no, they, they so consistently crap, play at a certain level. No, it's Arsenal not. players, no, you're relying on players to improve. They have to improve in order for your team to improve. Okay, They have to have way better seasons. What I don't get is that you and Martinelli have to double their goal scoring. Uh, hold on, hold on. You see what you do? You see what you do? You're, you're, put, no, you're putting words in my mouth. You're saying, I didn't predict anything. What people do, they do the same thing what they do with people like Ronaldo. They do the same thing what they do with people like Varane. They do the same thing what they do with people like um, Jorginho. They put these names on the pedestal and they just keep saying, oh, like, this player is this good, this good because of what he's done before. But this is, you know the beautiful thing about sports? You know the beautiful thing about football? You have to update your resume. You know the beautiful thing about sports? is every single week you have to go out there and you have to keep consistently you, improving. You, you do, though. But you do, though. But when Wimbledon starts and Djokovic and Federer are in the tournament, uh, sorry, uh, Nadal, Federer and Djokovic are in the tournament. You predict them as your favourites because they are the best at, because they've been the most consistent. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no harm in going, oh, I fancy Andy Murray this year. And I'm talking a few years back because I haven't watched mm -hmm. tennis. But, you know, mm -hmm. I think Andy Murray might do it. I think saying Arsenal might do it is fair. I think everything you've said about Arsenal's improvement is fair. Where I think you're wrong, and we do need to go to these super chats because there's been a yeah. lot. We have to respect the viewers. Where I think you're slightly wrong is just this default place that, Nobody else is going to improve because forget Man United. Exactly. Let's, just, let's just keep Man United. Better than them. Let's just keep Man United the right of the For all the things you've said about Chelsea and all the things you said about Tottenham, mm -hmm. they're building better squads on top of the teams that you don't really rate that already finished in front of you. And yes, you're adding mm -hmm. quality to yours, <laughs> but they've done it as well. So I just think the default thing. I'd rather hear you say personally. I just think we will be better than them next year, rather than default. Because I, I don't really believe in the default. No, position. I meant the default of of because because I think the default of the Man United thing. That I'm I'm not including them. That's what I meant to say. So if I got misconstrued or I kind okay, of, okay, fair, fair enough. The Man United oh, thing. I think by okay. default I'm not including them. So sorry, okay. apologies if I got no, that. No worries point. at all. Uh, and then it was sorry. Then it was the Chelsea thing where, as I said, I feel like yes, they are buying world class players. Well, yes, they're buying big names, but there's. 
we don't know what they're gonna do. Like we're we're, we're just assuming. I get that. But, but then, I get that. But, but my how logic, do we know what Jesus is gonna do? Jesus yeah, could easily just score like I said, I, said this, I said this to a gal the other day, and this is what I know. It's an Arsenal fan logic thing at the moment. Yeah. He said to yeah. me because I think that the Sandro Martinez is worth the forty-five million pounds that we've paid for him, and that's all we've paid right now. Mm -hmm. He said, "Only you're only gonna know that when he plays." By that same logic, Arsenal fans can't be confident about their season either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> because that, that, that is correct. Yeah, yeah. You but are. of course, but of course, I'm going to be more optimistic about my own club than other. I'm not going to just start saying. I'm, of course, I'm talking. I'm talking but if your logic is we can't rate, we can't predict Tottenham and Chelsea's because they've bought big names, but we don't know how they're going to play. Yeah, you can't yeah. predict yours because you bought three players and we don't know how they're going to play. Of course, yeah. But again, with Arsenal, I think. The, the major issues that we had was obviously that striker role, the centre mid role, and then obviously the fullback, which was a major problem. We've now, with, with us, I feel like with the with the Chelsea thing, it's, it's again, partly the manager, which he doesn't get any stick for. It is partly yes, the, the midfield that he, they don't get any, Jorginho was rated as the third best player in the world a couple of seasons ago. We don't know what's going to so. happen with the likes of Sterling. People, and I, as I said, my only thing with Chelsea is, I just feel like, with Chelsea, they're so highly rated off what they've done because they won the Champions League and they're still living off that Champions League. And I feel like that's a fair point to make towards Chelsea. And I know it's great. I, I, guys, it's I, great. I want to move. I need to start going to some yeah. of these super chats. We've got a lot, of, a lot of other points to get to as well tonight. Yeah. Uh,